All right, going to go back to the Angora burn zone with Dan McLaughlin and our friends from Cal Fire. Morning, Danny. Good morning, Todd, and good morning once again to our viewers from Northern California. Uh, this 8 o'clock in the morning on an absolutely beautiful Saturday, and usually this area is just filled with people that are taking their boats into the Upper Truckee River, the only river that really flows into Lake Tahoe. And as you can see right now, there's no activity at all. Why is that? Well, last year we received less than 5% of our normal snowpack. And so normally this Upper Truckee River would be filled with snow melt in the middle of June like we are. But there is no snow melt. I mean, when we look up into the mountains, there is no snow up there. Uh, we receive 5% of our normal snowpack. And so we are in the fourth year of a drought here in California. It may not seem like it here in Tahoe so much, but you go down on the west slope and especially down in the valley, and our reservoirs are dry and our fuels are dry. All right, now it's important to know, right behind us is this hill. We used to always bring our rafts here and we launch from the hill into the river. Now you can see how far down you have to go just to get into the river. And this is right in the middle of the snow melt season. Absolutely. Normally we'd have, again, two feet of, of water here. Our reservoirs would be filling up and had been, would have been filling up throughout the uh, last few months. And because of the lack of snow this winter and the fact that we're in our fourth year of drought now in California, we have no water. In fact, we're standing, we should be wet where we're standing. But important, what does that mean to the plant life and to the fire retardants that we have because the water table is so low? Well, what we're going to see, and I was really noticing it being a Tahoe resident and working in the West Slope uh, with Cal Fire, um, I'm traveling back and forth all the time. And we had really very little snow in the 3,000, 4,000, especially the four, five, and 6,000 foot level this winter. There was almost no snow at all. And normally that sort of sits there and it helps percolate into the ground and it lets our forests, our trees, get that water that they need. And so now what we're seeing all across the West Slope, up in the three, four, five thousand foot, six thousand foot levels, is our, our forests are very, very drought stressed, especially after four years of drought. That means they're going to burn hotter, they're going to burn faster, they're going to be igniting easier, um, and they're going to be more susceptible to to uh, beetle attack and other, other uh, vector attacks so that they may die, actually. All right, also, it has to do with the plant life that we see right alongside the riverbank because these trees and plants, they, their roots do not go down to the water table. This is indicative. The water table now is two feet below normal, so that means that now that it's getting hot, these plants and stuff are going to die quicker. Yeah, and we have our, our, our lot of our fuels are going to be a lot more perceptive to fire. They're going to burn faster, they're going to ignite quicker, just like we were saying, especially, and we're not talking just the grasses, we're talking all the whole range of fuels throughout our forest environment is drought stressed. Um, our trees, like I was saying, especially, they're a lot more susceptible to uh, bug beetle attack. It's one of the thing. one of the programs that we have is um, buy it where you, or burn it where you buy it, okay, so make sure that you're not transporting wood from one place to another while you're coming and camping in the Sierras this, this summer. Um, buy the wood right there at locally and burn it locally. We don't want to be transporting pests around the state so we can take it from a, from a forest that that's, has a lot of invasive pests, the bark beetle and things like that, and then take wood like that up into the El Dorado National Forest, which doesn't have as much of a problem, and just introduce those beetles into that forest. So yeah. please make sure that you're, you're, you're buying it and burning it in the same place. Don't transport wood. All right, we got an awful lot more to talk about, too. We're going to go over and try to see some areas where they're doing some work with Cal Fire is doing some uh, fuel reduction because it's a big part of it. And let's make sure Lake Tahoe is open for business. Just remember, everybody, fire safety, ready, set, go, defensible space, keywords, so we have a good season. We don't have another Angora fire in our neighborhood. All right. From the Upper Truckee River, along with uh, Captain Chris Sauer, this is Dan McLaughlin. We're going to go back into the studios with a host who's going to tell us what kind of a beautiful day it's going to be. The only man who knows, Todd Offenbacher. Thanks, Danny. Well, coming up next, will wildfires, wildfires ravage and devastate Lake Tahoe? Find out next in our seven-day forecast.